Welcome to Thack Tech Gaming. We're taking a look at another uh, card game. Uh, this is Ascension, uh, and this is the digital version um, of, of this card game. It's a, got millions of expansion packs in physical form, and uh, I, I personally uh, don't get a chance to play, with, to play with my friends all that often, so it's nice to be able to play a version digitally. So we're going to do an offline just because then that way I can show you kind of how it works. Um, create a new game. You, pick your pick your person or whatever doesn't really matter you can choose from all these different uh, um, all these different uh, areas um, uh, different uh, packs um, and then you, you can set up uh, how many uh, points you need to, to win the game I like to go for high points because it makes the game a little bit more longer and it makes the game more longer it makes the game longer and lets you uh, play with a lot more combos and stuff uh, these are all the expansion packs I've, I've got all the promos and all the different the different flavors um, this is the kind of the starting one so you can turn off uh, different packs and, and the packs add tons of different features and whatnot um, but I'm gonna go ahead I'll just start with just the kind of the basic the basic set and uh, you can obviously play around with with the different ones if, if you want to um, but this, this is the the starter uh, the starter set so we'll just do that um, <clears throat> and then if you looked at if you watched the star realms it, it's kind of similar to the way star realms works in terms of you have the the kind of the buying power and the uh, the damage or at attack power um, and you'll notice these have the little triangle plus one. So if I if I play all these, I click play all. I have five power to buy with. And uh, generally speaking, you wanna you wanna try to do some level of of uh, of combos um, based on the 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 factions. And you see that there's life bound here and there's void hero here. Um, these are different different factions and so a lot of times there'll be combos between um, the different factions um, so, so that's something to, to note uh, the big difference here is that you're going for points and you'll see that there's 120 points available he's got zero I've got zero um, rather than it being a uh, you know amount of health or something that like you would do in magic or in star realms even um, you're just trying to get points and you get points by having cards in your deck and by doing uh, by attacking monsters okay so you'll notice this says gain four um, gain four uh, points and you may and then you may banish a card in the center row and or a card in your disc card pile and that's a reward for if you kill it meaning it takes four attack strength to kill this and when that happens you get this amount of points and then you can banish a card in the center row blah blah blah. you can do your extra stuff this guy means when you kill him for three he gives you one point and you get one buying power okay so sometimes you want to do combos be like okay well i'm going to kill him first and then i'm going to get enough health to then buy another card and then that opens up another monster etc but we'll, we'll kind of see how that works okay so this is the tableau that both of us are working off of you'll also note that up here there's a cultist and heavy infantry and a mystic these are always available so if there's nothing down here that you can buy you can always buy a mystic for three you can always buy a heavy heavy infantry for two you'll notice that the mystic then as you play it is because it's a card in your hand or in your deck uh, you get two buying power with a mystic uh, the heavy infantry is different in that you can get two combat ability from the heavy infantry you'll notice that it makes a little this tells you basically that the the buying power is worth more than the damage and you'll you can obviously see that right here where there's not as many uh things to attack and these obviously do not permanently stay in your hand uh, these just immediately go away whereas these improve your deck for future rounds so it's kind of a balance between do you want to go heavy combat to get lots of points early on um, and because we're going with 120 point uh, uh game um, you definitely don't want to I shouldn't say definitely you generally don't want to go heavy combat in something like this because the cards that you keep in your hand are also worth points so it's like i get i can spend three to get one point i can spend six to get three points and that's going to stay in my hand and help me buy stuff later on definitely a better deal than trying to go heavy combat the same thing down here so for example this costs four and it's going to give me three um, attack power which is pretty cool but this guy here costs three but he gives me one every turn and i get to draw a card so to me the, the ability to get through my deck really fast is way too cool for me to not take a wolf shaman anytime i can get a, an extra draw um, i'm almost always going to take it um, now in this case i've got a guy that can give me either one buying power or one uh, military power uh, combat power so i think i'm going to take him instead of taking him even though it's two I'm going to go ahead and take this um, and now I have one buying power there's nothing that I can buy for one so I just click it in my turn 
Now he plays his. He's going to buy the Demon Slayer. So I'm going to go ahead and play that. Now, you'll notice I have two attack power. I still can't attack these two, but I can attack the Cultist, which gets me one point. So now you'll see that this goes down to 119. I get that point, and then it's it's I can just move. Okay. Now, the thing to note, like in this case, the Seer of the Fork Path, draw a card, you may banish a card in the center row. When you banish a card, it goes into the void. And sometimes you'll have cards that will let you impact the void. Uh, the starter deck doesn't do that as much. Um, so that, to me... What and it can also this will allow you to get a card out of your way if you if you're not going to be able to get it and you don't want your opponent to get it that's the reason that this would be nice um, I generally do not go after this uh, same as this this one it just lets me draw an extra card the reason this is nice is if you have a bunch of stuff that combos off of enlightened um, this just puts an enlightened guy on your thing but literally all he does is give you one point and then a lot not get in your way basically but at this point with the three I'm definitely going to go mystic to get myself more buying power in the future <clears throat> and he bought both of those enlightened so he's starting to go heavy enlightened um, so at this point here I've got the buying power of three is what it takes I've got four so it's unfortunate I'm gonna have some wasted but this guy allows me to banish a card in my hand or discard pile these are fantastic because you can get rid of the crappy cards it's called deck calling um, and it's definitely something you want to get uh, early on um, so we're going to go ahead and take, anytime I get a deck calling available, it's good. Now you'll notice, again, okay, so he banished a bunch of stuff. Um, if I click on this, this um, this guy here was able, you may banish a card in the center row and or a card in your discard pile. So he was able to get rid of some of his crap cards and he got rid of this all-seeing eye, which sucks because this is a fantastic construct. Once per turn, you may draw a card, meaning that every time you, you have six cards in your hand, that, that's super powerful. So he definitely wanted to get that out of the way, so I couldn't get it. Um, and you'll notice here, obviously in this case, I get to choose, do I want plus one buy or plus one power? Well, uh, combat power is not going to do me any good because I can't kill anything with one. So I'm going to just take plus one and then get all of my stuff. And now I can buy up to six. Now, this is where we start to look at constructs. This construct means that it's kind of like a base in Star Realms, um, if you've ever looked at that one. Um, the constructs stay in your hand every turn. Um, and so they give you this power consistently. Now, sometimes somebody will play a, a, a card that has an impact on constructs, but it's super powerful. The first time you defeat a monster in the center row each turn, gain one one power so every time you attack something or uh, you're and you're able to kill it you automatically get an extra point which is pretty powerful especially if you can get this early in or in the game it also just gives me three points straight up if i was to do that um so this is definitely powerful this land talker also very powerful because he allows you to get three points every time he comes up um, so this is probably something i'm going to do because i don't know if i'm going to be able to get six um, very often um, at least early on in the game so he was able to get one extra buying power from that guy, but that wasn't really that much for him. So here again, I just get one, and then I get to draw a card. Um, so let's see what I can get when I play all these. So I'm at four. This allows me to, uh, once per turn, I automatically get uh, combat power. I get two points, and then once per turn, I can spend four uh, buying power to just straight up get three points, which is pretty powerful. Um, yeah, see, and here's here's a combo. So... Every time you play this, if you've played another Lifebound Hero this turn, you get an extra two attack. So you get the two buy and the two attack, um, which is pretty pretty cool. Um, in this case, if I if I spend this guy as a buying power, though, I can buy the Snapdragon. And uh, so I definitely am going to do that because this allows me to get one extra buy every single turn, which is really cool. So that guy's basically wasted. And I could have I could have spent that other, um, th this mech... Mechana Initiate, I could have spent him as a power, which or as a combat, which would allow me to fight a cultist, but that would have got me one point, which at this point isn't really going to do that much. Now, you'll notice he's way ahead of me because he keeps fighting monsters, but I'm hoping that I'm going to build my deck up better and be, be better off in the long run. Okay, so I can banish a card in my discard pile, so obviously I'm going to get rid of a one of my one of my cards there. Play everything, and so now I get to beat him which gets me a point and then I can draw a card um, which is cool um, so let's see this guy gives me two and then allows me to pay one less the next time I, I get a construct and that's any construct whether it's mechana or mechana mechana I, I don't ever say that out loud so I don't know um, let's see here 
this is, I like this one better. Um, it's worth one more point, and the first time you defeat a monster, where this one I have to spend a bunch to do it. So I'm going to take that Void Thirster. And then Lifebound Initiate, I get one power and one point every time I play it. I'll take that. So he got rid of the, the staff, and uh, we'll see what we what we end up with. Um, okay, so here, again, I get a free draw card. That's pretty awesome. Temple Librarian is not bad um, because it allows me to discard a card and then immediately draw two cards. Um, and I don't have to. I don't have to do it. I could if I play this last. I don't actually have to drop a card. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. Hmm. The question is, do I want to go two, two, and two? This Reactor Monk is also really nice, though. I think I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do this. Let's see here. Sorry about the uh, pop-up sounds. Apologize for that. Let's see here. So at this point, we want to draw a card. Generally speaking, I want to do that uh, once per Okay, so that's a construct. So that just sits down here now, and that's going to just start. And oh, I got both my constructs. So I'm going to be getting one extra uh, attack and one buy every turn, no matter what. Um, that Those don't do anything. So where are we at? So we're at four. If we play this as a um, buying, we're only going to get to five. And five is not going to do us any good unless we went three, two. So we are going to play this as an attack, which means we get the cultist, which gets us one extra point. So we can either take this guy, acquire a hero with which with cost of three or less without paying its cost, place it on top of your deck, um, which means that basically you could take a mystic every turn that you play this guy. Um, I don't like that as much as I like this one. So I'm going to take the uh, the guy that gives me the discount on constructs. Constructs are super powerful, and having a crap ton of constructs is always a good always a good play. Um, gain three, banish a card in hand or discard. Let's see. Let's go look. Got a heavy infantry. Okay, we don't have any of our militias in our discard, so we'll go ahead and just play those. So now we can do this. So this is an example of construct manipulation. So gain three points, and each opponent must destroy a construct. We do not want him to be able to kill this, even though he has zero constructs. We don't want him to do it because if he does it, he would he would kill one of ours. We don't we don't we don't want that. Okay, so we have six. Grand design. Once per turn, you gain two, um, which is fantastic. But you can only spend it on mechana or mechana constructs. I'm going to pronounce mechana. Anyway. <laughs> It's worth six points, so I'll definitely take it um, because it's even though it's highly specific, it's worth a lot of points. And so at this point, we have got at least 16, so we're beating him uh, just in terms of the constructs that we have. So this is a free draw. Discard a card. If you do draw two cards, we're going to take that. We're going to discard um, the militia. Gain three. Gain one. Okay, so right now, if we play this militia... As a militia, we get three, which allows us to do this, which is going to give us one point and let us draw a card. Now we get our construct thing in there, and you'll notice now it says five and two, which means that we have seven that we can use to buy a mechana construct. Once per turn, gain one. You may spend it only to acquire, so that's fine, but notice what will happen. This five two is going to turn into a two because we were able to pull away, use up the two, and then still have some left over. Okay, so this guy's only going to do that. And so we can get to four, which gives me the two-fold Ascara, which allows me to duplicate the copy of a hero that I played. Or I can go um, Militia, or sorry, I can go Combat, which isn't going to do me any good. So I'm going to go ahead and play it for this. I'm going to take the two-fold Ascara, and then I'm going to end my turn. Okay, so we've got draw a card. Okay. Banish a card in my hand or discard pile. We do have the militia, so we can get rid of that. And we can play all. Okay. If an opponent has more than one, doesn't matter. But we we don't want we don't want him to be able to play that, obviously. Okay. So six and two. Now, so notice that we can still buy this, even though it says we can only spend six because we have 
Mechana Construct. Now, this is fantastic because all of my stuff that's saying, hey, you can only use it for Mechana Constructs, I can treat everything as a Mechana Construct if I have that thing available, which is amazing. And then this one, not super awesome, but it allows me to banish cards, so I'm going to take that for the deck culling capacity. Okay, so now we play all, and we've got 7-2. So none of these, however, are const... Oh, this is a construct. So this would allow us to get this, so we'd be down to just 5, um, which is enough to do a flytrap witch. So I'm going to buy this. So we still have... Oh, crap. <laughs> I didn't play it. It's still it's still in my discard. It's not in my... I, okay. That was unfortunate. Okay, but at least here I get a banish, so I'll take that. That was that was unfortunate. Okay. I was thinking I was thinking I had this available, but I didn't. So now now I could have bought that extra one. Okay, never mind. Okay, banish a card in my hand or discard. So obviously I'm going to take out an apprentice, banish a card, and this is why that deck calling is awesome because now they're not going to be coming through anymore. So now I've got three and three, which is super fantastic. Unfortunately, I don't have any constructs available, but hopefully we're going to be able to get rid of it so we're going to gain two you may banish a card so I'm going to kill that and now I'm going to banish this one because this is a must destroy a construct I'm going to get rid of that because I don't want him to be able to get it and unfortunately no constructs came out so that kind of sucks um, this guy is a gain two attack well he's, he's worth more points first of all secondly he allows me to draw a card if I control two or more constructs and I have five of them so I will take him um, because I'm going to get the free draw. This guy gives me uh, one and draw a card, but I think it's uh, that's an obviously better choice for me. Um, unless he gets the ability to trash all my constructs. And those come out sometimes. Okay, so we're going to gain three. We're going to draw a card. We're going to discard a card. Okay, so right now I've got two. Um, I'm going to take that now. I can get another grand design, which will spend my three, and I'd still have three left. I'm going to go get rid of the heavy infantry. Okay, I get my extra draw. Copy the effect of a hero. I'm wondering if I do a discard, and I discard the apprentice. And get two more cards. I'm going to copy the Temple Librarian and discard that and see what I get. Oh, that was horrible. <laughs> that really sucks. Okay. Well, if I go to... Okay, Master Dartha is a draw three cards, which is fantastic. Um, but this one right here, acquire here without paying its cost and place it on top of your deck, is just super powerful. Um so I can get to two or four because that's only going to get me to five, which won't let me buy that, which sucks. Okay. I was hoping that draw would be way better. So now I can kill two of these guys. Ugh, that was, that was unfortunate. Okay. Banish a card in hand or discard. I'm going to take that opportunity. Gain two, gain one. I'm not going to banish this, obviously. That's gain two. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. Nope. I'm going to copy that one. Because that lets me buy a grand design and a flytrap witch. And I can kill the cultist. Okay. I thought about going after the wind tyrant, but I think that was a better play. Okay. Banish a card. The void initiate's not awesome anymore, so I'll go ahead and get rid of that. Gain one, draw a card. Okay, so this is this is a case of acquire a hero without paying its cost. Place it on top of your deck. Please note, I can now get Master Dartha for free, which is amazing. Okay, so that's six. Take a card at random, draw two cards. Okay, so this is a perfect example of, of the right order. So because I was able to do that, right, and I just got my, my draw guy on the top, I can gain five and draw a card, which then lets me draw a card, and then draw three cards, so I have all the cards, and now I can discard, and I can get rid of this guy because I don't need him, 
and I can do all this other stuff. I mean, it's it's crazy. The amount of draw that you can get in this game is just insane. Okay, so that's all my buy. So at this point, I can buy a Void Construct, and I still have six left, so I can take both of these. So like this one is saying, once per turn when you put a Mechanic Construct into play, including this one, draw a card. And importantly, it's three. So I can immediately get another card when I'm playing another card. It's just, yeah, it's awesome. Okay. So there's no three here, so I'm going to go ahead and just take the four, um, meaning that I get this, and then I can take a Void Initiate, which isn't amazing, um, but I like the idea of keeping him away from culling as much as I can, um, so we're going we're gonna to do that. Okay. And again, I'm, you don't have to play this long. Um, I, I just said like the high count because it lets me get to a, a point where there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of churn and a lot of um, cool combos happening. Um, draw three cards. Okay, so there's another construct. Pay one less. Looks like we're probably going to use him. Okay, probably going to use him for... Oh, here we go. <laughs> a ton of wind tyrants out. Okay, so this is telling me I have to... Um, uh, take a card at random. I don't like the idea of him doing that, but... I really don't like this one because it, it he'll force me to destroy a construct, which I don't want to do. Okay, so if I take the Hedron Cannon, once per turn gain one combat for each construct you control. That's super powerful. I will take that. Um, and then I will take the combat, which lets me kill him. And then I'm going to leave this kind of in the way for him. And then I'm going to end turn, and it's it's asking me if I want to end it because I it's telling me, hey, you can buy this stuff, but I, I don't care. I'm not going to do it. Okay, so gain, banish a card in my hand or discard, so we'll get rid of the militia. Gain three, gain two and draw a card, draw a card, draw a card. Banish a card, yes please, apprentice. Okay, so now what do we have? Gain two points and draw a card would be pretty good. Um, I could go for the Banish again. I think I'm going to go ahead and take out a Wind Tyrant and see what I get here. Um, Aesthetic of the Lidless Eye, anytime I can get extra draw, I'm going to do it. So we'll, we'll do that. And then there's a Construct that can use up some of my um, stuff there. So if I go... If I go two, you may Banish a card... That would get me enough for, to do this one. Um, if I go three, I can get seven, which is not really awesome. So I think I'm going to do this. Banish a card. I thought I... Oh, it forced me to... Dang it, that sucks. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this initiate. Okay, so now I can get three extra... Hmm. Gain one point for each faction among constructs. I have, like, one of each, so that's four points. Once per turn when you acquire a construct, put it directly into play. Yes, I will take that. Because I can get my stuff really fast. Okay, so I get to draw a card. Let's see. Okay, so I now I got five every turn, which is fantastic. Um, draw a card, acquire a hero without paying its cost, and place it on top of the deck. Um, I think I'm going to take this guy out. Discard a card. So I don't think I'm going to get. I don't think I'm going to get enough attack. So I'm going to go ahead and discard that. Draw three cards. Draw a card. Draw a card. Okay, so now I have a construct that I can play. Gain one for each construct you control. Remember, I've got the thing that makes everything a construct, everything a mechanic construct. So this is going to go from two to 12. <laughs> one of those nice combos. So this one, gain four, you may acquire or defeat any card in the center row without paying its cost. So I will happily do that. And then I can acquire or destroy. Now I still have five attack. 
and I'm going to get two more, so I don't need to. I don't need to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and take this flytrap witch for five. So now I do this, and I can banish a card from my hand or discard pile. I will banish that, and then I have enough to kill this guy, which takes a card at random from my opponent, which is crap, but whatever. Uh, and then I can acquire here without paying its cost, put that one on top of my deck, and then finish playing my cards. So I have all of the points. Um, this is a this is a banish doesn't really matter. Um, draw a card, you may banish. Um, I don't really like most of this stuff out here, unfortunately. I'll take that guy. Um, I'll take this guy because I, I do have a lot of lifebound stuff. And then I think he's worth two points. He's worth three points. Um, I'll go ahead and take him. And then because I have five, I can go ahead and buy this for free. Um, and we're getting down there in terms of uh, in terms of points. So I've got 69 points. He's got 41 points now, 42 points. But we're gonna easily easily be taking care of this. Um, make sure that I have all of my constructs played. Let's see, tons of points. And I just took a bunch of points, obviously, by just playing that construct there. Can banish a card. Let's see where we at. Get rid of another apprentice. Now we're going to kill this. May banish a card. Um, I don't really like those. May banish a card from my discard pile. We will probably banish a mystic. It's worth one point, but at this point it kind of doesn't matter. I can banish another card. We'll go ahead and banish this. And we'll banish a mystic. Actually, this doesn't matter because we've already got all the points, so I shouldn't be banishing it because it's taking points away. Okay, so in this case, we've got... Uh, I'm going to buy this for free, basically, and I can put it in play, which immediately gets me one extra point. <laughs> and then I can spend the rest of them on the things that get me lots of points by taking that, and then this is a three-pointer that I can get. So I'll do that. Then I will play Hedron Cannon, which gives me tons of points. And now I can just keep killing cultists and I end up with crazy points and that'll be the end of the game so it, it's one of those things where and I don't know the AI in general in this game is not super amazing um, I just think it's fun to like do the combos and stuff um, generally 99% of the time you'll be I mean, once you've figured out the game you, you'll beat the AI um, but I, I just think it's kind of cool. I like all the way that the cards play off each other. And like I said, the, the other add-ons add tons of different flavors. Um, th there's energy stuff that you have to worry about. You can power up cards and um, all kinds of different mechanics that, that are in the that are in the game. Um, later on, in some of the later on expansions, you actually play kind of a character and you have leveled up cards. And uh, it's not quite to the level of Soul Forge or something in terms of leveling up cards because the Soul Forge mechanic for leveling up cards is amazing. Um, but obviously, this is a this is a, a board game that was turned into an electronic version, um, and so th the leveling up thing of a card game is a little bit tough. There are some games out there on Kickstarter I've seen, but um, that, that actually do that, but it's they're few and far between. So at any rate, um, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions about the game, uh, please feel free to leave a comment below, and uh, th I'll see you next time.